supply and demand are basic to economic way of thinking so it's kind of neat to see how you can use them to analyze a real world situation so let's look at the demand uh, for unskilled labor uh, what might be called the minimum wage controversy so we look at this uh, graph and it's our normal thing we have vertical uh, price on our vertical axis we have quantity on our horizontal axis um, this would be the demand for unskilled labor right here. This is the supply of unskilled labor and at the intersection point uh, we've just assumed that the equilibrium price I've just made up a price of five dollars and this would be the equilibrium quantity. And so now let's see what happens when we impose a price floor. So somebody comes along, uh, the government or some other self-appointed smarty and says let's let's use a minimum wage like P1 and I just made up a figure of say seven dollars and fifty cents so at a at a price of seven dollars and fifty cents of wage you shoot your arrow across and this is how much labor would be ready willing and able to be supplied it would be quantity OC but using the same uh, price of seven dollars and fifty cents we shoot the demand curve over to uh, I mean the price over to the demand curve and drop the plumb line and we see it's at quantity OA so what has just happened with the imposition of the price floor is that this group of people OA group of people just improve their overall wages from this rectangle right here was their original uh, total revenue now you add this rectangle on top of it but and here's the big but this group of people oh a group of people benefit at this group of people's loss so a Q a number of people just lost their job they became unemployed so you hear the argument that the minimum wage some people Republicans make the argument that the minimum wage will reduce uh, the employment and, and this is what they're talking about when they say that um, one consideration in the real world uh, suppose this price floor this P1 suppose it was closer to the equilibrium price you can see that it would have less of an influence if that were the case but there's another empirical question to talk about so let's look at the next slide what we're really asking is how sensitive is the demand for unskilled labor to a change in the wage price and so over here in this graph we have an inelastic demand for labor whereas there's an elastic demand over here so we say for a given price change maybe from P1 to P2 look what happens in the first graph here it only has a small impact on employment but over here in the right hand graph the same price differential causes a much bigger um, difference in employment so what we end up with in the real world um, this way of thinking is called the neoclassical theory of price and it and it basically says this with respect to labor it says if I if you if I hire a worker and they bring in a hundred dollars of additional revenue to me then I can afford to pay them ninety nine dollars and I'm still coming out ahead if I can pay them seventy five dollars that's even better or another way of saying all of this is labor gets paid what they're worth um, but on the other hand there is more gray area in, in this uh, situation it's not very black and white and there's no consensus on the issue at all uh, compared to entitlement reform uh, it's, it's, uh, this is a small potatoes entitlement reform is a big big deal in terms of dollar value uh, but this is a hot button topic politically and I think it uh, it revolves around Americans desires to make sure that nobody's taken advantage of and also the belief that you're helping people you're helping the poor uh, others might say that really the earned income tax credit would be a, a, a better way to, to do things but that's a different issue altogether